present. I'm only going to give uh, statistics of the dairy sector, starting with the, the value. Uh, the estimated value of the industry is uh, 266.7 billion, I think higher than tea, than coffee, and the other sectors. So, uh, David D., you're very right that this sector is very, very important. In terms of uh, what we produce, 5.2 billion liters, we're all aware, 45% uh, we consume at, at home of that milk, which is about 2.3 billion liters. Uh, that's why we are high per capita consumers of milk in Africa. Kenyans consume a lot of milk. 55 of this is traded informally uh, through the mini dairies, the dispensers, sold by uh, milk traders, and out of that, 30% is handled by the processors here present today. We'd like to transform that sector to move as one of the targets of the sector to formalize this sector because it has a lot of benefits. We have, as a country, uh, 40 processors. Today, we have 38 present here. Mini cottages, which we are supporting, we have about 200. We have 100, which are um, dispensers, and the milk parts, we have 1,000. These are supporting our small-scale farmers who are in different parts of the country. In terms of contributions, which you know directly in terms of employment, and indirectly and directly, we do about uh, over one million. Uh, in terms of cost of milk production, uh, the variable and direct cost is about 47, and indeed you have mentioned this. The highest contributor of this is processed feed, at 13.5, followed by FODA uh, at 7, uh, FODA and the feed 13 and 7.8, which is the highest contributor in terms of cost. We must actually intervene in those areas of process. We also have issues of AI. Currently, sex semen, we get it in the market at uh, 7,000, which is very high. It contributes about 10 shillings per liter, that is drugs, veterinary drugs, and artificial intermination, and we also have uh, labor. Labor is still an issue, but we have interventions through uh, the development areas of the sector. In terms of processing, that was at farm level. Uh, processing, of course, the highest contributor is the farm gate pricing, which is about 55.5%, contributing to 55. The margin for the processors here present is about five shillings and point one, three. In terms of the cooling uh, infrastructure, we have a total of 436 active coolers across the country that install capacity of 3.98 million liters daily. The utilization is slightly over 55 percent, but we want to rally our farmers to move there. In terms of uh, formal intake, it has been growing, but because of seasonality of our sector, one year it has grown, the other year it has dropped. We, last year, we dropped by a negative 0.6 compared to 2021, where we had processed over 800 million liters. In terms of uh, installed capacity of our processors, we are at 5.2 uh, 5 daily installed capacity, 80% processing fresh milk, that is UHT. They're doing UHT 35 million liters daily, and they're doing 33 in terms of pasteurized. The rest goes to uh, value-added cheeses, butter, and uh, high-valued uh, products. So this is a liquid market. We want to, uh, to grow into high-value products, that's the yogurts, the cheeses. We're still importing a bit of cheese because the demand for cheese is growing up because of our youth. Uh, in terms of uh, producer prices, it has been consistently going up. Uh, currently, we are at an uh, average of 48.7, uh, slightly dropped from uh, 50 shillings. That is the farm gate uh, price. And uh, in terms of uh, consumer pricing, it has been very, very consistent. It has not grown compared to the farm gate pricing. We are currently at an average of uh, 112 per liter of pasteurized milk.
When you compare 2016, we were at 107. So the growth there has been managed by these uh, processors. Uh, in terms of value, it has been going up because of the cost of the formerly marketed uh, products. Export, uh, we had a huge jump uh, from uh, 1.5 kgs to 18 million kgs last year. This is because of the conversation we had as a sector and we started penetration because we want to achieve the 1 billion export. And one of the areas that we're looking at is ESC, the market that has actually grown, the 18, billion, the 18 million kgs that we have exported is UHT, cheeses, yogurt, and flavored milk to southern Sudan, Somalia. It is a growing uh, sector that we are going to ensure that we build and even double this year, considering doubling the export market. In terms of competitiveness of our sector, this is an area that will require a lot of intervention globally. WMP, which is whole milk powder, that is highly traded globally. Ours is the highest at 67.8%. Globally, we, we, uh, one kg of uh, milk powder is 441.6, while in Kenya, it is 740. We have to do some intervention to lower it so that we can compete globally, and it is very, very possible because we have identified uh, areas of uh, the cost. Basically, it is on feed. In terms of uh, imports within ESC, we are members of East Africa Protocol, and basically most of the milk that comes to this country is from uh, Uganda. We imported last year 71 million uh, liters and 15 million kgs of whole milk powder. The 15 million whole milk powder is actually used for processing high-value products in EPZ for export to the UN agencies. But majority of our, our, our processors here are able to uh, absorb and get from uh, the two processors. We only really have two processors who are able to produce uh, milk powder. That is New KCC and uh, Brookside. That, those are the only processors out of the 40 who are able to do um, milk powder. Uh, that is it, uh, Your Excellency, in terms of the statistics of uh, the dairy industry, the processors will be able to give the interventions. And we are expecting uh, an increase of milk in the market because of El Nino. And our request is um, to be allocated funds to be able to mop up the excess milk that we project to have a surplus of about 38 million liters for three months. This is only to the formal uh, sector. So that's our request, Your Excellency, and thank you very much.